Hey, Megan, how you doing? All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I was reading through your writing. Um, let me see, I had so much fun creating this piece. I wanted to keep it clean and simplistic, make sure all the important imagery stood out, such as the rocket, moon, and Mars. We, we have there, I want to I want to talk about the relationship of this rocket right here and this image right here. I'll get to that in one second, but I tried to have a good variety of fonts. I think your type combinations are actually pretty cool. Good job there. I'll look forward to the ways to improve this piece. Okay, Megan, I, thanks for kicking things off here. I have a lot to throw at you and not a whole lot of time to do it. So I'm going to talk fast and, and uh, I'll just cover a lot of things. Now, listen, if you have any questions at all, please let me know. But Okay, let's start, as I said, I wanted to draw a relationship between this image and this rocket right here. Right now, I don't think, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and I don't think there's a high enough degree of, of, of comparison here. Um, in other words, I think there's a direct relationship, obviously, between the rocket and these two planets. That's the whole essence of the article, right? So we wanna make a, a, a stronger visual tie between this opening image here and this rocket here. And I think the way to do that is to increase the size of the rocket and, and maybe even um, just make it a little bit more prominent in your layout. So that's gonna do two things. It's gonna draw the two pages together. It's gonna to make a connection between rocket travel from Mars um, and beyond uh, to the moon, Mars and beyond. And um, it's also going to it's going to draw a little more attention to this, which is almost it's, it's you can almost miss it in this, this layout. It's just really not in a prominent position. Um, OK, another um, the, the title area is good. I think it's, it's really good. This, this is good, good type combinations here. Um, it, this, it, it's really difficult to tell this typeface right here. I'm not sure if it's the same typeface as this. If it's not, I would recommend using the same typeface. This looks like it's more of a, in a bold, and this is more of, of a light. So a little bit more consistency here between this and this right here. Um, another thing, I think that this works. This works very well because the reason it works is because this S, the serif in this S is in nice alignment with that. Um, vertical stroke of that modern serif um, that you're in that modern uh, typeface you're using the dome typeface you're using for moon and mars so that's nice that's good alignment right there i think your kerning on mars is great but moon is really really wide these are really super wide remember our kerning rules um so you want to apply kerning to that um i think this could be a little bit more interesting maybe if it were to be reduced to the size now you're offset here right so these aren't in alignment so i want to just kind of emphasize that offset by taking this and moving it up a little right over here in this area right here so it's not in alignment so we have that kind of offset um, moon and mars which also resembles the offset of the moon and mars in the background um, so they're not in alignment. So these, this is going to be out of alignment just to kind of mimic what we see in the background. Um, okay, as far as the actual hierarchy itself goes, I think there's a couple of problems. I think one of the problems is the fact that your subheads here or, or your, your section heads are, have this, this dark background. And what that does is it's creating too much attention to that area and it's drawing hierarchy to that area. Um, the, 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 the caveat here is that you're kind of inducing the viewer to jump right over here first. My recommendation is not to include those black boxes in the background of the subheads and also consider again, a sans serif for the subheads while you're using a serif for the body copy. Um, good um, um, two column type right here. Your type uh, lines are nice, good character count, good line length. A good typographic color. Everything looks good there. Um, I think at, at, at this point, I want to talk about the, the baseline grid. If I take a, let me just do something right here. Hang on one sec. I, I want to grab a straight edge here because I want you to see something. I'm going to use this as a, as a ruler. Just look at the top of this right here, and I'm just going to take it and place it right under there, and let's extend that. And you can see your baselines are not in alignment. So you definitely want to get your baselines in alignment. Also, over here, um, you've got these two width um, column widths, and that's great. I think we're looking really good here. The first page is, is, is set up nicely, but the second page, theoretically, you've got a two-column grid on the first page. You should have a two-column grid on the second page. The problem we have here is that the first column in your two column grid is much wider. It's, it's probably um, 
several points wider than this text block right here. So you're, you're breaking the grid a little bit and it adds a little bit of uncomfortable visual tension. Um, I think the viewer kind of subconsciously notices that these type lines are wider than these type lines and it kind of throws the whole thing out of equilibrium. Make sure your grid is consistent in the presentation of um, um, your column widths. Um, so, but with this being reduced a little bit, you're going to have a little bit more room here to increase the size of the rocket. Um, okay, now your space between paragraphs. Right now, it we it's it's kind of difficult to 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 determine um, again hierarchy here because right now we've got inconsistent spacing. So at the end of this line right here, you've got a good space between the end of that line and the headline that follows. However, here that space is smaller and here it's smaller too. So really, theoretically, the viewer doesn't know if this head belongs to the paragraph above it or the or if this type belongs to the paragraph above it or the paragraph below it, and that's all due to proximity. My recommendation here is to remove the black box in the background, use a sans serif to introduce that new type, maybe consider a different weight. Um, I think the sans serif should draw enough uh, difference to, for the viewer to realize that that's a new section, and then just add a little space after the paragraph before. Um, and you'll do that in paragraph styles, um, space before, and, and that will show the viewer that indeed this paragraph has ended and this is a new paragraph. Okay, we've got a couple of widows type. Technically, that is, is a widow. It's two Mars, so I would drop the next word down to that. Widow is a word that sits on a line alone, and that's a big, big typographic no-no and something that portfolio reviewers and definitely hiring professionals will be on the lookout for um, in portfolio reviews or even in the interview process. That's technically a widow. That is definitely a widow. And there's one more right here. Actually, there's two more right there. And then this hyphen right here that forces the rest of this word down to the next line, that is again, technically a widow. I don't think any of these, these lines right here, I, I don't. I think that this is this type right here, this is set off enough that it creates enough difference here that we really don't need to frame it. I think the framing of this with the, the, the uh, um, horizontal rule above and below the graphic, I think it, it, it impedes, it, it, it doesn't make sense because right now it's, it's saying that, okay, this is a rocket ship, it wants to take off, but you've got this line over it kind of holding it down. So we want to establish a relationship between the rocket ship and basically infinity as opposed to trying to confine it into a, a little area. And again, that's going to draw an interesting relationship between the rocket ship and the image itself. Um, this is interesting type treatment right here. I like the drop caps for the numbers. However, right now you're using an italic, an oblique style on the numbers, and it's touching the type. Let me get in here a little bit. We can see and it's actually touching in some cases the words, the beginning of the words. So when you set that drop cap, just try to give yourself a little bit more space between the letter and, uh, sorry, the number and where the type starts. Drop cap over here, drop cap, drop cap is a great technique. However, this is too small. So watch hierarchy because right now the numbers are bigger than this drop cap. This is a sidebar. So theoretically, these these are superseding this um, in terms of, of you know trying to, to to establish hierarchy. So a I would keep these at three lines deep, but I would definitely definitely increase that to three lines deep. That drop cap, um, maybe even four. Four is probably going to be too much. Technically, we don't really go four deep on a drop cap unless it's it's really for a specialized purpose. So try four, see how 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 it feels. Um, Good rags, good rags, excellent job there. One final comment I have is, is using um, what is called uh, old style capabilities. Now, depending on what type, what I want you to do is I want you to Google um, um, old style numerals or old style figures and how to establish old style figures in InDesign and also um, how to establish small caps in InDesign. And it depends on the typeface you're using. If the typeface has open type capabilities, you will be able to establish of small caps in areas where you're using capital letters see how much bigger it looks than the rest of the type what you'll do is you'll use small caps there and again that's an open type capability you can you can google it it's really easy um, or if the typeface doesn't have open type capabilities with small caps available what you can do is reduce this nasa the type size of any capital letters um, by about two points or so 
um, start with a point, see how it works, and then it, you might have to drop to two. Um, I would say two would probably be a good, good, good uh, uh, mark. Um, also, the numerals, you want to try to use old style numerals. Okay, and that's really great typographic practice. And again, you can just Google um, how to set old style numerals in InDesign. And it, again, it depends on the open type capabilities of the font that you're using. But if those open type capabilities do indeed exist, you'll be able to set your um, numerals to old style figures and your uh, all caps to small caps. All right, other than that, I think we're off to a great start. Um, Oh, right here, you're saying right here, this, this di treatment difference right here, basically what you're telling the viewer is that these two things are not related. Okay, one falls outside the box, the other falls inside the box. Even though it's the same statement, the exploration campaign goals, you've separated it. You've made a degree of separation in this, which is telling the viewer, basically saying that these two things are not related. These two things are related, so let's get them to look like they're related on their presentation. Okay, other than that, I think um, and that's about all I have. So sorry I took so long, but I wanted to be as thorough as possible. So any questions, comments, concerns, or if I can make any clarifications, please let me know. I'll be glad to do so. Um, and I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing this. Most important thing, of course, is to let me know if you have any questions. All right, great start. Thank you very much.